starved for entertainment, humor, and meaning. Two brave best friends set out on an epic quest to combine their love of improv comedy, movies, and storytelling to create a show that defies the odds and redefines cinematic genius. Dude, it's just a podcast where we use short-form improv games to tell long-form improv stories in the style of famous movies. Right. You're listening to In a World of Improvised Movie Homages. I'm your co-host, Avish Parashar, and I'm an improv comedian and a professional speaker. And I'm your co-host, Mike Worth, and I'm an improv comedian and professional film and video game composer. We both love improv, movies, and storytelling, along with getting a little bit silly and ridiculous. And hey, if you also like these things, then you are in the right place, because that's what this show is all about. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Hey, everybody, welcome back for another episode of In a World of. Looking forward to today. Uh, Mike, how you doing? I am awesome. I am really looking forward to today, too. This is going to be a really wild, uh, offbeat film, and I'm looking forward to it. How are you doing today? Uh, I'm doing good. Doing good. It's been a uh, long week that was supposed to be a light week that of course uh you know stuff happened and it yeah. became a less light week i know um, it's like it's a good thing to be busy but it's like wait when do i not get busy i guess when we die <laughs> so. yeah exactly so at least that uh we'll get to have some fun now uh probably for the first time since we started recording these episodes i actually watched some of uh, one of these sample type movies to refresh my mind and give me some ideas. So I'm, I'm looking forward to today. Uh, that must have been an experience. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, uh, I'm not saying I watched a good movie, but I watched a movie I was very nostalgic for. A so reference we'll get to that movie. in a moment. Yes. Uh, so quick overview. If you are listening to In a World of for the first time, here's how it works. Mike and I love improv movies and storytelling. So we combine them into one show. We're going to improvise a movie for you in audio podcast form. Uh, but we're going to tell the story by playing a series of improv comedy games. So we're going to start with a genre or an example movie as our starting point. Then we break our show into four segments. Number one, we spend five minutes discussing the tropes, cliches, commonalities of the genre. Segment two, we spend five minutes hashing out a high-level outline for today's movie. Segment three, we spend five minutes picking and deciding what improv game we are going to use to play uh to act out each act of the movie mm-hmm. and then segment four once that's all set we perform the show so mike why don't you tell everyone what today's genre is after a painstaking decision making process which lasted all of about 14 seconds uh avish and i decided to do a wacky summer camp uh 80s um sex comedy film kind of thing like meatballs uh, the reference that Avish, I can't believe you found it, was Poison Ivy with a young uh, Michael Keaton <laughs> or Michael, Michael J. J. Fox. Fox. Oh yeah, Alex yeah, Keaton. Not the J. Poison Fox. Ivy with Drew Barrymore, which is about like underage sex or something. But no, no, no. The the, the, the charming eighties, you know, kind of like um, um, teen comedy. So that's really what it is. So teen comedy. Yeah. So the camp movie can really go one of two ways. There's the sex comedy like Porky's uh, and Up the Creek, and then there's the uh, family, more family-ish, like meatballs and uh, poison ivy. <laughs> At this point, we're not sure which way this one's going to go. I don't know either. You know, uh, since it's audio, I don't know how good the sex comedy is going to work. But we'll think maybe it goes that way. We don't know. So uh, this is an interesting one. I'm not. I've, I have not seen movies like this in a while, and I'm I'm really excited for us to to try and channel our Bill Murray. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you know, sometimes it's going to be fun to do a genre we're not as close to because then, you know, it gets a little more random. Yeah, so, yeah. And we may be wrong. We never said we'd be totally correct in our, in our okay. genre acting out. I'm, I'm, here to, I'm here to have fun with my buddy. So if you guys want to listen, that's exactly. great for you. <laughs> All right, before we get started, a uh, quick announcement. Uh, one thing that would help us grow the show a whole lot is uh, if you like the show, if you could go over to iTunes or Spotify, Overcast, whatever your podcast uh, listener of choice is, and leave us a five-star rating and potentially a nice review that will go a long way towards helping others find us. And if you like the episode you're listening to now, uh, go ahead and share the link to this episode on your preferred social media platform. Yes. All right, Mikey, are you ready? I am ready. Let's go rock this out. Segment one, discussing the tropes. All right, so first what we are going to do is we are going to spend five minutes talking about the cliches and tropes of the genre and commonalities. 
Uh, so Mike, I know you said you haven't seen uh, one of these in a while, but what do you think of when you think of um, your camp movie? Well, usually it's kind of a, a bit of a fish out of water kind of thing. So what happens usually is, is, is the hero uh, is usually a semi-normal person that goes to this camp. And the camp is, of course, run by a bunch of oddball misfits, and there's this kind of very caricature people. So that's the first thing I think of, is that the main character is kind of the voice of the, the audience or the eyes of the audience, and they're just basically experiencing this really bizarre off the wall loony environment. That's kind of what I'm thinking. Yeah, and I feel like there's always two sort of storylines. One is like the counselors and one is the kids. Yeah. And they obviously overlap, but you know, I think your like main character, your kind of normal one is the counselor usually. Um and then there's always like a there's always a kid who's like shy or introverted, um who's like the the main kid character. Yep. And they sort of become the hero in the end somehow. Right. Or they have a heroic moment, one of their specific skill sets kind of thing. That's a very classic thing, right? Their, their skill set just generates. Yeah. Cause these, these movies always build up to something, usually a competition, like a, 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 a like both meatballs and poison ivy have like the color war or the competition with the other camp. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's where the, and that's the thing. They're all misfits. Like, even if they're cool, there's always like a nerdy care, a nerdy camp kid. There's usually like an overweight camp kid that they're always making fat jokes about. Yeah, yeah. There's the jock. There's a there is a romance that often brews, and uh, it's usually so. Let's let's focus on the kids for a second. Then we'll get to the counselors. Usually, the romance blooms between um, well, usually the main character, um, and he usually has to uh, grow or, or do something to kind of convert the love interest from looking at him in one way to looking at him in another way, right? You know what I mean? Like, he has to overcome some sort of, uh, not character flaw, but character um, um, limitation. Yeah, although I, I would say that I find that more of the counselors. I feel like the kids almost are a little young to get too, like, too much oh, of a romantic Oh, maybe that on. is the counselor. Yeah, yeah, maybe that is the counselor. The counselor being, like, the teen counselors, right? They're not, like, adults, but... Uh, um, oh, right, right, right. Usually the counselor, there's, like, a boy, a male counselor, a female counselor, and... You know, yeah. Usually yeah. it's, you know, the guy is trying to impress the girl who's either got a boyfriend or isn't interested and he kind of has to like grow and overcome and yeah, show yeah. her that he's actually not just a goofball. Now, who are the bad guys in these kind of things? Is it usually a rival camp? There's yeah, I would say there's two ways of going. There's the rival camp. Um although I think you only see the rival camp at the actual competition. The rival camp, but then I think within the camp itself there's there's like the bullyish so, you know, in camps, you generally have, like, your cabin, right? Your cabin mates. And they're all kind of cool. But then there's, like, another cabin that maybe has more of a bully. Or the counselor who's, like, the the head counselor who's, like, dominating and doesn't like. Or maybe it's a rival for their romance's interest. Yeah, yeah. So so this is actually a pretty deep movie, if you think about it. Because what we've got is we've got the, the kid that comes to camp, right? Um He's going to be like one of the main characters. He's surrounded by these misfits that he has to kind of become one with. There's a there's a rival cabin full of jerks. At the counselor level, there's the cool counselor who's who's peripherally involved with the with the with the good guy kids. Uh, but then there's usually an evil head counselor or an evil rival counselor that is. Um, but the rival head counselor is kind of like incompetent. He kind of like he doesn't really make life miserable for the good counselor because the good counselor is like Bill Murray. He just kind of skates through. Just like everything's yeah, real he's easy like for him. Overzealous, over much rule following. Like this is the way things have to be done. Yeah, yeah. And the counselor is more like bonding. Like the, the main character counselor is more bonding with the kids and yeah, doing yeah. things to help them come out of their shells and grow. Exactly. So he's kind of a mentor. He becomes kind of a bit of a mentor figure, um, you know, in a comedic way. And then, yeah, it culminates with you, some big competition. And you know what? For this, maybe we'll just keep it within the camp where it's like the, the cab. There's an intra cabin competition, and so the misfits like Revenge of the Nerds. There's there's yeah. a movie that that could be similar to that, right? Where you know, yeah, I mean that's uh, not exactly camp, but I mean college is basically <laughs> camp for eighteen year olds. Yeah, so, uh, camp with booze basically. Yeah, Lambda, so, Lambda, yeah, Lambda, it's Lambda. a similar type thing though. Builds up that the outcasts they have their strengths. They got bullies, and then they have the final competition. Yeah, that they definitely, out. definitely the second-tier characters are caricatures. Like, there's, like, very little character depth to any of the buddies in the good guy. They're literally yeah, they've got their the role, overweight kid. Like, yeah, you're right. They're, they're, they're archetypes, right? There's the, yeah, the overweight dork, kid. The, the jock, the yep. overweight kid. Uh, there's, d- like, sometimes, like, a sex-crazed one. Yeah, yeah, right. There's, yeah, one who's obsessed with always sneaking over to the girls' locker room to see stuff. Yeah. There is... And I'm, I'm, I don't care. This is, I, I don't. 
I don't even care. There's the token Asian. There's always this, and it's usually the nerdy one. You got to have the Asian. we're doing 80s Asian. camp movie, definitely, yes. <laughs> I don't care, man. Right. If people are like, let's do race, like, whatever, dude. We're, we're, we're spoofing. Well, maybe a token Asian character. I don't know if we're going to put on the affected Asian accent for Ooh, this one. Ooh, I that's, can't do that. No, no. We're that's, just, that's just we're cool. Right now, we're just talking about the tropes. There's, yes. That's They're true. They're all tokens, right? There's like a token black kid. There's a token Asian kid. Yep. Um, if we're talking about an 80s camp movie, then like, you know, the token Asian kid's going to be the nerd or the gadget kid, you know, like data yep. from from the Goonie. <laughs> yeah, exactly. A, a short round. Um, All right. Well, that was our timer. So that brings us to the end of our discussing the genre tropes. Yeah, it's actually a surprisingly fluid genre. Yeah, I mean, there's, it's, it's, it's pretty straightforward, but there's a lot of like moving parts that may or may not That's find their way. Yeah. Which brings us to segment two. Segment two, creating the outline. All right, so now we are going to spend five minutes talking about the outline. Mike and I are going to hash out our outline. We use a four-act structure. If you're familiar with the three-act structure, there's that's the standard storytelling one. We just break act two into two parts. Um, so we use a four-act structure. It just works better with the improv and, and kind of helping define the story. What happens at the end is um, when we go to perform it, we may not stick completely to this outline just because the nature of improv but yeah this is going to be our starting point so our five minutes starts now okay all right act one so first do we want um we start with a trailer or a prologue i feel for this it probably makes more sense to do a trailer i don't know the prologue really yeah um i think the trailer might make more sense actually so we'll do that we'll, we'll do some sort of trailer okay that'd be easy act one uh, pretty easy, which is a main uh, kid character or main camper character. Yeah, right. it's kind of like day one at the camp, right? Like Yeah, arrives at camp, yeah. Day one, they arrive, you kind of meet the misfits, you meet the counselor, you sort of meet everyone. Meet the misfits, meet uh, a good guy counselor, right? Yeah. All right. Uh, let me think. Actual main camp arrives at camps. Do we meet the, yeah, we meet the bullies at this point. Yeah. And I think, um, so this is kind of a meeting type thing. You're, you're doing a lot of establishing and then something needs to happen at the end of act one. Um, probably something that, uh, you know, puts either the main counselor or the, uh, main kid into some kind of situation where they need to succeed. Um, yeah. Kind of like some kind of twist, like, Oh, well, all right. Yeah, well, yeah, a lot so, of these movies, it's like the first act is almost like them going to camp, and then Act One is like, or Act Two is like them establishing camp. But I think that'll be a little too long. So yeah. So Act One here's the, at the end of Act One, a uh, the glove is thrown down. That's what's going to happen. Something happens where either the main camper or the main camper and his cabin, the challenge is issued. And it's usually probably going to be like you know at the end of the summer, we get the color war or the cabin war. Yeah, right? they kind of meet the right. It's almost like the the first interaction with the real bullies happens at the end of Act One. Yeah, again, going back to uh, One Crazy Summer, right? When they when they at the end they have the uh, the, the great yacht race. This is another variation of that idea. Yeah, right? building you know, up to that with a young Jeremy Piven. Uh, so <laughs> yeah, and so, it's not camp, but in a lot of ways, Harry Potter almost is like that. Right? They go to the school, they get set up at the school, yeah, they yeah. have their hijinks over the year, and then it culminates in. Right, right, right. Whatever at the end. So, so act two is All right, going to... So act one, basically just meeting everyone and then kind of having some interaction with the rival slash bully. Yes. Uh, act two is the misfits uh, trying to do activities and I think four this, points. Yeah, and I think what happens in act two is that they're all kind of doing their activities. And, and, and let's let's say for this for this one that it's like a score all summer. So that's the whole point. There's there's a vestige for them oh, to like cumulative score. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cause then, then it's vested and then to be like, yeah, man, we have to build this derby car. We have to like build this canoe or whatever. Or But here I would say some, if not all, of the kids, but definitely the main kid, I think, is a reluctant participant. They're not they're trying to get away or avoid. They're not giving it all. The team's not the group's not come together. Like they're all sort of Yeah. Like they're not bullying each other, but they're not they're not clicking. Yeah, they're not clicking. They're they're kind of sort of like still feeling each other out, right? And and uh, okay, and okay, and they might even be getting also sabotaged by the, no, that's an act three. Act three is getting sabotaged. So then so I would say the act two ends where it's some event that brings the team together, like you know, yeah, they they bond over something. The bullies do something, but then they all kind of bond together. So like kind of a bonding moment to end act two. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that could be also driven uh, by the counselor. The cool counselor. 
like he may be like we're all gonna go out and, and go to a, a party or something and they all like they all work together to solve a problem or something like that and they you know and they kind of uh yeah like in poison ivy which i just rewatched. uh yeah you gotta you gotta be the expert on that know, act two sort of um ends where um the one kid tries to run away um but there's some kids who had snuck off the the main camp and when the kid gets caught he doesn't reveal who the other kids were who gave away and so this is the kid who was shy and not bonded with anyone but everyone like suddenly appreciates him and respects him for not ratting them out like that sort of thing happens where they they bond they have some shared experience that makes them bond a little bit yeah 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 exactly yeah and exactly so now act three the misfits start gaining because they start doing really well and now the bad guys start sabotaging them that's what i was going to say happened before but like not in act two it happens in act three because the bad guys are like oh man we're starting to lose points and blah 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 right yeah and so yeah they do well but then the bullies bad guys sabotage so from this outline, it seems like, and I think it makes sense for an improv thing. Is our focus is going to be on the kids. I think the counselor is going to be, I think, trying to run two parallel stories in this format. Yeah, that, that I, we're smart so, people. That's a lot of brain power, man. <laughs> yeah, so I think for right now, we'll keep the focus on the, the kids. So yeah, yeah the bullies yeah. sabotage and do things. Um, so the kids are doing well, and they seem like they might have a chance of winning, but then the bullies sabotage. And it often ends, I would say, with uh, a disaster or a betrayal. So... Well, I was thinking, uh, Oops. yeah, that's right. We're taking an extra minute. Yeah, there's Take some sort minute. of betrayal. Like maybe, for example, a uh, bad guy counselor, like who's playing by the rules, like invalidates them or something like that. Like, like you know, remember overrule. He again, we, he's not going to be a big part of it, but he could be the Deus Ex Machina for the for the betrayal. You know? Yeah, he could invalidate. He could come up with some loophole or some fake rule as to why they don't get their points. Um, a betrayal sometimes is like the um, one of the kids was like forced into sabotaging his own team. Yeah. Like, 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 um, hi, like hijacking the, the, the thing that they're building or something like that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, or yeah. Or someone gets hurt. Misfit um, black. Yeah. Blackmailed. Like if there's like, like in, in meatballs, I think like the, the best runner got injured. Um, which is why like the kid who's like the main character had to run in her place. So like, yeah, there's some kind of disaster at the end of Act 3. Yeah, and now for Act 4, Act 4 is going to be, usually there's a final challenge, and this is where it comes down to, like, because of all the machinations, uh, final challenge, misfits have to win, right? And here's yeah. where, look, the creativity happens. Somehow, whoever is the the recipient of the Act 3 issue comes back like he gets healed or you yeah, know or if he was the betrayer he comes back and like steps up yeah, and yeah. usually that's usually not the main kid who's kind of more of a loner um and that main kid usually steps up and does something to help them win yeah betrayer redeems himself yeah and then main character steps up demonstrates uh, character growth to win the day and uh, be- become, you know, the the leader, like the, hero, the, lo- like the little leader hero slash of hero of the misfits. Yeah, yeah, the Rudy of that moment. Uh, yeah, yeah, and uh, and by the way, the betrayal, as we said before, right, is not done by the main character. Yeah, um, I would say the main character is not the one who does the betraying, right? I'm already like, okay, so who's going to be Sean Astin today? Because this is literally going to be a Sean Astin movie. That's right. Nothing wrong with uh, that. This is a pretty good outline, I think. This, this will get yeah. us going, right? All right, yeah, and we're beyond our five minutes, so I think this is a good outline to go with. All right, good. So uh, our next segment, then. Segment three, choosing the games. All right, so now that we have our outline, we're going to spend five minutes picking improv games uh, for each act, for each act and the movie trailer that we came up with, we are going to decide what's the short form improv comedy game we are going to use to tell that part of the story or act it out. So our five minutes starts now. All right. Mm-hmm. Uh, so trailer is just that's just the movie trailer improv game. Yep, yep, yep. Mm, act one. All right. Act one. So uh, let's take a look. So for Act 1, where there's a lot of interactions and people meeting each other. Yeah, so it's going to be a lot of scene. This is going to be a scene. This is going to be a scene one, not a story one. Yeah, but we need a game where, where I think we can see a lot of different interactions, right? Yeah. Because a scene a lot of time is one thing. So we need um, 
Uh, let's try. Here's a game. It's a variation on a game. Uh, let's see your face is like what? Um, so this is improv. It's like switching scene. It's it's like a it's it's a combination of switching scene and telephone. Uh, I call okay. it cocktail party. So we do a two person scene, which okay. will be between any of these two. When we clap. We have to start a new scene that begins with the last few words of yes, the sentence. Yes, but two brand new characters, two brand new locations. Or one new character and one the same. So we're going to, but there's going to be a completely different scene. It's just not going to be the same two characters. So we'll be switching back and forth, but they're connected via the last line. Yes, and, and we can and we can have multiple. We can have up to, we can have even three or four conversations as long as you and I are good at identifying our characters. Yeah, as long yeah. as we do a good character work and when we start, we identify exactly which scene we have moved to. Name drop like a boss, dude. Lots <laughs> like, of like names, remember, lots of... Hey, Jim. <laughs> All right, and for right now, I don't really have an f- official name, so I'm going to call that one Cocktail Party. That's a great um, game. I want to play this game. This will be fun. Hey, okay. for all you listeners out there, it's this is this is live, baby. Like a game we, I've never played before. We're gonna do it for you live. This is what well, this is one of the things we this love. This is what about it's all about, man. It's just like, why not? The same, yeah, not just playing the same games we know work. Uh, which incidentally, uh, Act Four, we're gonna do Cutting Room. Yes, yes, but that's because right, so, that's because it's just so money for us. It's so much fun. So our, our last game, we'll do Cutting Room, which is kind of our standard for closing it. But we also like to throw new stuff in because that just makes it yeah. fun for us and hopefully yeah. fun for you. Yeah. All right, so we need two more games for Act Two. This is where the misfits, you, you kind of starting in on the competition, but they're not clicking. But then something happens at the end that brings them together. Uh, so, yeah. Um, we could do a gibberish switch. Um, gibberish I don't, don't want to do what happens next. That That's kind of a, it's a great game, but it's like, I'm not feeling. It's a great game. It's also very similar to Cutting Room. Yeah, we haven't done Ding in a while. You want to, you want to uh, maybe do sure, Ding? Let's... Let's do Ding. Yeah, and you know what? I remember, like remember, Ding, we, obviously. Uh, quick yeah. plug, my speaking website is dinghappens.com. So Dear professional, I'm, yeah. I obviously, I'm a big fan of that game. And also, and we reserve the, the right to go to narrator clap, and we can move the, the scene Ding. We can have multiple small scenes where we're still playing the rules of Ding. What's that? If we want to do what? We can have multiple uh, scenes that are all using the same rules as Ding. So because, you know, this is Act 2 is like oh, all yeah. the... the yeah, the, and we'll kind of, when we get to the end, we'll explain that. Like, yeah, yeah. It's, it's kind of a loose structure. All right, cool. All right, so for Act Three, and Ding is going to be. We're going to do that as a scene. Yeah. So for for uh, Act Three, one game that we like, we haven't done in a while. We can do a storytelling one. I was thinking we do A to Z. Um, Ooh, yeah. Which we like. We haven't done in a while, and we've got all scene games so far. So we'll do a storytelling um, one, yeah. And we can loop A to Z if, if the C, if if we haven't gotten where we need to in the story, right? We can just keep on going. Yeah. We loop yeah. A to Z back to A and all that. And then and back to A, yeah, uh, if we need to. Usually we've wrapped it up, but if not, we can keep yeah. going if we need to add on. Gotta go boot up the dictionary and look for words with Z. There you go. <laughs> all right, so the quick uh, the quick summary is we're going to start with movie trailer, which is just we're going to improvise a movie trailer for this movie we haven't performed yet. Then we're going to open with a game we call Cocktail Party, where we will do a scene, clap hands, and switch to a different scene that has to begin with the last few words of the scene that just ended and we'll be switching characters and scenes as we do that. Yeah. And, and jumping back and forth between them act two, we're going to do ding, which is where uh, we'll do it as a scene or multiple scenes. When one of us is talking, the other can say ding. When they do the person has to stop, go back and repeat what they said, but change it. And then the scene continues only as that new thing was said. Yep. If you've done improv, you may have heard that game called new choice. Then act three, we're going to do a storytelling game with a to Z where Mike and I will tell a story. The first person who speaks, the first word has to start with the letter A. The next person will say the next sentence, but that has to start with the letter B, and then C, and then D, and then so on and so on. Finally, we'll end with a game called Cutting Room, where we'll start out with a scene, but then Mike or I can clap our hands and say, cut to a different scene, future, past, tangential, or completely unrelated, like production notes in the movie, in the world, mythology, wherever. Yep. A lot of fun. Random musical number. <laughs> and a quick note, as Mike and I perform, this is just two of us playing some games that often have four or five or more performers. So number one, we'll periodically jump from being in the scene to narrator mode. So for example, oops, that's our timer for five minutes. We're, 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 we're playing ding. ding, we'll be doing a scene, but one of us may step out and say, okay, let's jump to this scene now. So right. we'll switch to narrator. Number two, we're going to be playing multiple characters and sometimes we'll both play the same character. So if I establish one counselor, Mike later on may take on that counselor if that just seems natural. Yeah. So basically there are no rules. We'll do our best to uh, do the characters in a way where it's easy to follow. 
but it's on you, dear listener. You got to pay attention. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Uh, so last thing we need to do before we begin performing this is to come up with a title for our movie. Uh, yes. And we have been traditionally now been doing this one word at a time. I like that. I, it's just, right. it's fun. We usually get good. Uh, I think we've always gotten a really good title out of that, you know? Yeah. All right. You want to kick it off? Yeah. I'll start with one word at a time. Uh, okay. So just to remind myself, this is uh, 80s. I don't know you have seen 80s. Um, fun uh, camp comedy, teen camp comedy thing. Okay. Yep. Um, canoe and the flow <laughs> works right. for me canoe and the flow <laughs> is canoe. it and or in canoe and the flow I think canoe and the f- and A-N-D I think got it <laughs> alright I have no idea what that means where that came well, from I'm already seeing some that? Act 4 stuff there <laughs> alright good Canoe and the flow is a title. Yep. All right. So that, that's already the music. I, I don't have my piano up, but it's already going to be. You know, that's that's the, the trailer music for the trailer because you know it's going to be like that. <laughs> Love it. All right. All right. Are you ready? Segment four. Showtime. So we are going to begin with the movie trailer for Canoe and the Flow. In a world (laughs) where some fit in and some don't, there is one place left on the planet where people can go to bond with total strangers. Welcome to Camp Canoe, the place where you'll spend your summer. Camp Canoe, oh God, I don't want to go to camp this summer. I don't know anyone here. Why are you sending me to camp, Mom and Dad? Now, this is going to be for your own good, William. I'm telling you, you're going to find a great, great experience over at Camp Canoe. You just may send us some cards and let us know how it's going. In a camp, sent for fun, a group of misfit children will get together, bond, and realize that the only way for them to succeed is to work together. This summer, join us for Camp Canoe and the Flow. And there is our teaser trailer. Totally makes you want to run out and buy a ticket for that movie. Especially with that dick dad. Oh, it's okay, William. You'll be fine. I added and a... every every game movie has the, the homesick kid and yeah. the dick dad. I don't want to... <laughs> that should have been the title, the title of our movie. movie. That should have been the title. Homesick kid homesick and the kid dick dad. Dick dad. <laughs> I, added camp, I added camp to our title. It's Camp Canoe in the Flow. I like it. Okay. Right, camp we'll do Canoe that. and yeah. the Flow. Hey, Excellent. Get, All right. It's what we want to do. It's our, it's our own thing. All right, so we have established our movie trailer. So now we will see Act One of Camp Canoe and the Flow. And to do this, we will be playing the improv game Cocktail Party, where we will do a scene, and then Mike or I can clap our hands and say switch, and we'll have to jump to a new scene, picking up with the last few words of the scene that just got clapped off of. Yep, I'm gonna I'm gonna start with a little bit of a quick a little quick narrator thing to frame, okay? And then we'll jump in. Yep. That's cool. Uh, <clears throat> Camera pans out, sun rises up, and a dingy yellow school bus pulls into the drop-off zone of the woodland camp. The door is open, and you see the kids start tumbling out, and counselors are scattered around, starting to kind of mill around, etc., etc., etc. Okay. Hey guys, I'm uh, I'm your, I'm Counselor Steve, and let's let's get together. Listen, you five boys are going to be in my cabin, and we're going to have a great summer. <laughs> I, I'm really excited to be here. <laughs> my mom says I've got to get out more for my allergies. Okay, uh, allergies. Yes. All right. So, uh, so you uh, must be um, Kenny. Uh, Kenny, don't worry. Uh, your parents gave me all the medication. We're gonna have a great summer. But we're gonna make sure that you don't get too allergized. Oh, that'll be great. I really need this to be able to go back and. Be in my honors athletics class back at school. <laughs> I need to be back in honors athletics class at school. It's the one class I can actually pass. And so I got to win an award here at this uh, at this camp so that I can go back there and not get kicked out. Okay. Listen, Derek, you are the athlete here. You, 
you know, Kenny's not going to be able to do much um, in terms of athleticism, but, um, but Derek, you know, I, I remember you from last year, you did such a great job and we we're going to help you. Uh, you know, we got a great baseball program here. You're going to get that athletics honor program. Man, I hope so. Cause I'll tell you something. I've just been feeling like I've been failing all over the place. And even the stuff that I'm good at, the athleticism, it just hasn't been working right. I don't understand. But, you know, if maybe maybe working with these guys with Counselor Steve will help me get a little better at, at being an athlete or something. Something you guys should know. I, I, I'm kind of scared of the dark. Um, and I don't like being in the sun. And I'm only at camp because my parents sent me here. I don't, I didn't really want to be here, guys. So listen, I don't want to bring you down, but just, I just want to stay in the cabin and read this summer. That's okay. I'm not allowed to go out a lot either, Daniel. <laughs> we can hang out together and, and, and maybe, maybe we can, we can learn a little bit about each other when we're staying away from the big, scary, dark outdoors. Uh, yeah, I guess. Listen, um, that's really sweet, but. I, I don't like small talk. I just, I, I just want to get through this summer and um, I'm just going to, I just want to stay by myself um, and, and not worry about it. I just want to get through this summer and stay by myself and not worry about it. I am so tired of dealing with these little whiny kids. All right. So just like all you counselors, just have them follow their rules and stay the heck out of my hair because I am done with running this camp and I am out of here at the end of this year. Counselor Ira, you have a bad attitude. That is not the spirit of Camp Canoe. We are here to set an example for the kids. Oh, my God. Counselor Jill, could you please stop being so perky? I don't know what's gotten into you, but I am done with hearing about your go get him attitude. Just have your kids and anybody that's near you in your cabin just dot their eyes, cross their T's, and leave me alone. Leave me alone until I've had some food, guys. I'm so hungry. My mom <laughs> took away all my candy bars before she put me on my bus. When are we eating, Counselor Steve? Hey, man. Uh, hey, wo wo woman. Uh, so uh, you must be uh, M Matilda. Yeah. Uh, okay, well, w w our first... My name is Matt. My name is Matt. All the kids call me Matilda because of my man boobs. Even though <laughs> I'm only 10, it's not sorry. fair. There's my feelings. Sorry, sorry, Matt. Sorry, sorry, Matt. Matt. Uh, well, the, our next meal is uh, in two hours after we have our two opening. Two hours, I'm going to die of diabetic shock. <laughs> I'm going to pass out. It's not fair. We're going to sue you, Counselor Steve. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Oh, well, I'll tell you what then. Why don't we see if we can dig something up in the kitchen? I'll be back in a couple of minutes, okay? I'll be back in a couple of minutes, Ira. Counselor Steve, could you come help me with carry some of these supplies? Hey, absolutely, Jill. It would be my pleasure. So good to see you. How are your kids this summer? Oh, they're so good. We're going to have the best spirit summer ever. How yeah. are you boys? Well, you know what's even better is that your cabin and my cabin are right next to each other. I'm really <sighs> looking forward to spending some quality time with your campers and you. Oh, Steve, you know I have a boyfriend. <laughs> sure, <laughs> they all have boyfriends. <laughs> it's not fair. Um, they all have boyfriends. It's not fair, man. I came to this camp, and you know what? Every one of my friends at home has has boyfriends and girlfriends, and I, I just came to this camp hoping to meet some girls, and then I find out I'm in a boy's cabin with you four? Oh. How am I going to get some this summer if I'm just stuck with you guys all summer? Hey, Jack. I know, man. I, I get that you're kind of feeling a little bit like you wanted to uh, go see some girls. But you know what? This might be a chance for you to, I don't know, strut some man stuff. Kind of grow as a, as a, as a you know, grow as a, as a testosterone-fueled awesome person. I mean, I know that when I started doing my athletics in baseball that I really had to grow as a person. So why don't you focus on maybe that? And, you know, the girls will come. <laughs> I didn't even do that. <laughs> All right. The girls will come, Jill, if you know what I mean. If you help me with these sheets. Oh, yes, absolutely. Totally. I was like, oh, look who didn't get kicked out this year. Over there, cabin 25. David, remember him last year? Bullying, 
Claws oh. and pranks. Three kids had to go home early because David was uh, completely m- making fun of them, ruining their experience. I thought he wasn't being asked back this year. I guess. Oh, you know what? What? I didn't think he was either, but look, he's with Counselor Ira. He brought he brought David back on purpose so that his cabin could win the Camp Canoe Flow Off. God, is there nothing Ira would stoop lower than? Ugh, fine. He can have Ed, David and anybody else that he wants. We're still going to do a great showing this summer for our cabin, and we're going to win the great flow off. Let's jump ahead to David David meeting um, our main five uh, campers. Yeah, Kenny, Daniel, uh, Derek, Matt, and Jack. Yeah, right there. All right, here's David. Well, well, well. Look who's in the cabin I was in last year. <laughs> I now know why they put you guys in cabin L, because I see five losers right here. Hey, you better you better shut up, uh, David. I remember you from last year. You gotta you be, you stay away from us, okay? Oh, what's what's Kenny? What's the matter, Daniel? You, that was Kenny. Well, that's Kenny. Oh, yeah, Kenny. <laughs> Kenny the nerd. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, what's the matter, Kenny? I'm having trouble hearing you. Maybe it's because you're wheezing so much. All of a sudden, David grabs the little inhaler, starts holding it above Kenny. Huh? Huh? Hey, you give that back, all right? You're not such hot stuff, David. I'm an honors athlete. We're going to take you down this year. Who's this new guy? What's your name? Derek. Derek. <laughs> Derek. <laughs> Derek. <laughs> Derek. <laughs> I'm Derek, and yeah... I know people like you, but you know what? Just because you're bigger and stronger than most kids here, you may be a little bit bigger and stronger and older than me, but you know what? I'm not going to let you bully this camp around. You know what? I like you. You got some spunk. You got some spirit. I'm really looking forward to kicking your ass this year when we take camp awards home at the flow-off. Here, Kenny. Here's your little squirter. Here's your little squirter, David. That's right. Get back over here with your squirter. You don't you mess around with those campers. We are in competition with them. Get back to our camp. No problem, Counselor Ira. See you guys at the first event. <laughs> Have a great day. And see. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. Oh my god! So, uh, I think probably I'm, our most ambitious cast of characters we've done yet. One, two. Uh, I should have said your house of three, not five. So to quick recap, we have finished our first act. We have established our campers. We have Kenny the nerd. We have Derek the jock. Yep. Can't read my handwriting. We have Derek the jock. Derek. Derek. We, we have, have Daniel the scaredy cat. Daniel the scaredy cat. Jack is the guy who wants sex. The horny guy. Yep. And the horny and, guy. And Fat Matt. And Fat Matt. <laughs> that's yes. Good. That's gonna be the name. Fat Matt. <laughs> and our counselors are Steve, Jill, Ira, and our bad bully camper is David. Dude, this is an ensemble cast. This is yeah, all right. We are ensembling it up. All right, so that brings us to Act Two, and to act out Act Two, we are going to play the improv game Ding, where we are going to do scenes, kind of like we did. But at any point, Mike or I, after one of us talks, the other person can say Ding. When they do, whoever just spoke has to stop, go back, and repeat what they said, but change it. So if it's, hey, we should uh, go to gym, Ding. Hey, I don't like him. Ding. Yep. Hey, um, let's go for a swim. And mm-hmm. so on and so on. When we stop dinging, we keep going, but only is that the last thing was said. So in this scene that I just did, the gym and him would be gone, and the scene would continue with them going for a swim. Right. Whatever gets replaced never existed. It, it got Thanos snapped. <laughs> it got Thanos snapped. With no possibility of coming back in the quantum verse. Yes. No quantum. No quantum. <laughs> All right, so act two of canoe, Camp Canoe and the Flow. Mm-hmm. Over the loudspeaker. Welcome to day one of the 10-week composi- competition for Camp Canoe and the, fl- uh, and the Flow Off. Today's first event is going to be fishing. Each team will go out into various canoes or rafts and spend the next 30 minutes trying to catch as many fish as they can. The winner will gain points towards the victorious, uh, towards their scoreboard. All right, all right, all right, campers, come on, gather around. Listen, we got to get the fish. Um, any of you guys have any experience fishing? Well, I went fishing once, uh, but I, I, I kind of, um, the boat couldn't move when I sat in it, so we only were able to get to the small 
the, the shallows and I caught guppies. Part um ding. <laughs> I was sitting in the boat and then got distracted by puppies. And then when I stepped out of the boat, it kind of seesawed the guy into the river. And that was the last time I ever did fishing. Ding. It doesn't have to rhyme. That's part. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, that was the last time I ever uh, uh, saw open water. Ever since then, my parents moved to, to to Arizona, and I've lived in the desert for my whole life. <laughs> Dude, Matt, you are useless, but you I agree you should not be the one uh, uh, in the boat. Now, listen, guys, I'm very athletic, but honestly, I've never gone fishing before, so I don't know. Uh, I think one of you guys got to take this one. I'll, I'll take it, no problem. I'll I'll uh I'll be the lookout for the uh for the fish. I just need someone to go with and I'll be able to call out where the fish are. We should be able to get them really easily. Okay, uh, would, uh that sounds great. Um okay, so Kenny, you'll be one of the two. Daniel, uh what, do you wanna go with uh you wanna go with Kenny? Oh there's a lot of water. I'm not really sure. I, I I guess I could try, but it's really scary, and I'm not a very good swimmer. Ding. I'd really like to, but but I just had my dinner, and I think I'm going to get sick if I go on the boat. Ding. I think if I go on the boat, I'm going to end up having to pee, and I, I'm not wearing any sort of zipper pants, so I might act, cause an accident. All right, fine. Um, Dan, why don't you sit this one out? Um, 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 Jack. Jack, listen, go out on the boat. You'll be in the middle of the, the lake, and you can actually see to the girls' camp um, if you take the boat out there. Good. Flash forward to Jack and Kenny uh, out on the boat. Kenny, allergies, and Jack. Got it. So. All right, Jack, uh, grab your binoculars and tell me where the fish are, okay? All right, but, oh, I'm looking through these binoculars at the girls at the camp across the lake. I, I can't. Uh, uh, no, what are you looking at? I, I don't even know where to go for the fish. What are you, what are you doing? Why aren't you helping us There the is fish? a girl in a bikini. Wait, stop moving so much. You're rocking the boat. It's, oh, oh, yeah. Um, you're rocking the boat. Oh. All right, fine. Listen, just uh, I'll take a quick look at the fish and then I'll look back at the girls. Ding. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what. Um, why don't you just jump in the water and you can grab the fish with your hands and leave me alone. Oh, okay, I'll do that. <laughs> the boat starts rocking. Oh. Uh, Kenny, are you okay? Can you swim? <laughs> the water's too cold. I can't swim. Ding. The water's too cold. I can't feel my legs. Ding. I think there's a giant shark under me and he's nuzzling my feet. Oh my God, that is a giant shark. Quick, give me your hand, give me your hand. Get Ding. back in the boat. Um, yes, that is a giant shark. If you can catch that shark, we'll win the competition. Ding. Yes, let the shark chop on your leg and then I'll pull you up and the shark and okay. we'll save everything at once. Okay, okay. Back to the back to the shore. What's happening over there? Why is Kenny swimming? Why is he getting dragged around in the water like that? What's happening with him? Uh, Daniel, can oh you- Oh my God, you guys are such- Idiots, you didn't put in the shark repellent protocol, did you? You Ding. guys are a bunch of buffoons. You guys, you didn't know that I put a shark in the water. You you were ignoring, you're off having sex with Jill instead of being at the meeting when I said that. What, what you put a shark in the water, Dave? That's that's completely that's completely illegal. Well, uh, show me anywhere in the Camp Canoe rule book where it says you can't put a shark in the water. Ding. Show me anywhere in the Camp Canoe book where it says I have to follow the rules. I write my own rules. I got the book of David. <laughs> back to Kenny, back to Kenny and uh, and Jack. <laughs> the shark's on, nuzzling my leg. It's nuzzling my leg. Ding. <laughs> the sharks introduced me to its mate and its little kids. Now I'm surrounded by multiple sharks. Oh my God! If we get all these sharks, we'll set a camp record. Kenny, right. just let them all eat you. I'll try to. I'll try to do it. I'll try to do it. Oh God! They're nibbling. I think it's starting to draw blood. <laughs> Cut back to the shore. Um, <laughs> hey guys. Um, Listen, I, I don't want to get too close to the water, but doesn't it look like they're in some real trouble right now? I think those sharks are eating them. We, we're going to have to go. We're all going to have to work together to get those guys out of that shark-infested water. Uh, um, let's see here. Matt, you're the biggest out of all of us. You sit in the back of the boat, and you start paddling and pedaling, uh, uh, paddling to get the boat over there, okay? Ding. You sit in the back of the boat, and since you've been eating a lot, you flatulate. Flatulate and drive that boat forward like a giant gas engine. <gasps> Oh my God, my eating powers will be used. Yes, I will fart. I will be a fart outbound motor. 
Oh, excellent. And then, uh, uh, Daniel, uh, you sit in the front, and since you're scared of everything, you can look around and see where the, any of the sharks are so we can avoid them. And I'll paddle and steer. Okay, well, I'm afraid to do it, but, but I'll do it to save them. So anything that scares me, I'll let you guys know so we can navigate around it. Ding. Um, okay, um, I'm, I'm really scared to do this, so I'm just going to close my eyes and pretend like I'm doing a good job. That sounds like a great idea. Let's do it. Back to uh, to uh, 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 Kenny and Jack, okay? All right, Kenny. Come on, Kenny. Get back in the boat now. Will you stop messing around? Uh, I, can't, I can't. The shark's pulling at my leg. I'm going to need some help. It's too much for me to do by myself. Ding. It's too, it's too strong a shark. I'm going to have to give up my life for the good of the camp. Ding. I'm going to have to write a memoir about this and hopefully make millions of dollars to pay for my reconstructive surgery. No, no, damn it, Kenny. Listen, you're not going to die. Listen, all the girls from Camp Chibawada are watching, and if they see me save you, I'm going to get it. They're, they're all going to want me, so you can't die on me. You're right. You're right. All right. Help pull me back in. Help pull me back over into okay. the, the boat. Oh. oh, you're too heavy. If only I had some help. All of a sudden, the boat pulls alongside. <laughs> oh, hey. Look, guys, we bumped the boat. Quick, uh, Matt, Jack, uh, Matt, um, the other guy, Derek. <laughs> go help them. Will do. I'll go over there. I'll hop over on the boat here. <laughs> Give me your hand, Kenny. Oh, here, here, here. Pull me up, please, before the sharks finish eating me. Ding. Uh, no, I'm kind of starting to enjoy the sensation. I've never done anything physical. Ding. Um, no, you come in and fight the sharks. If you hit the sharks with your with your strong athletic muscles, you'll knock them out, and we can take the sharks and win the competition. That's a great idea. Let me jump in and do that. Jack, you use your, use your binoculars to tell us where the sharks are. Splash. All right. All right, to your left. To your left. Punch, whoosh, punch whoosh. now, Derek. Punch now. Whoosh, whoosh. Hey, guys, if I throw some of these candy bars in, sharks are allergic to chocolate, and they'll they'll die without us having to punch them, too. Great job, Matt. Go for it. Kenny, look to your left. There's a shark. Uh, the sharks have strong nasal passages. Do something with your inhaler. <laughs> okay. This is battery acid, shark. Let's see. You referenced it. <laughs> you referenced it. Someone's using an inhaler. Brilliant. As an assault weapon. Oh my god! Gotta go to it, dude. You didn't. All right. For you podcast, you didn't see it. it. Was so funny. I forgot a third of the way that we were in ding, and all of a sudden, Avish starts holding up the little ding. And I was like, "Oh right, we're doing ding." <laughs> I was so weird. All right, you get hey. so into the game sometimes. It's hard. Yeah, yeah. Hey, but well, you know what? We had the bonding moment. I was like, I was like, "All right, how are we gonna do this?" And I was like, "Oh, there's the bonding moment." That was yeah, solid. So we finished Act Two, where our campers, who were kind of on their own, no one wanted to participate, all came together to save Kenny from the sharks and catch the sharks using a combination of yes. punching, inhaler, and chocolate. Yes, and 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 binoculars, the porn binoculars, right? And the porn binoculars, yes. Let us not forget that those sharks were illegally put there by a cheating, lying, scheming David. Cheating, lying, scheming David. Yes. So now, uh, so kind of transition narrative. We have moved forward in time where because of the team's good work, they have started doing well in this competition. They won the shark competition. And as the competition continues, we're going to pick up the action with Act 3, playing a storytelling improv game called A to Z, where one of us will, will tell a story one sentence at a time. And when we do, the first person who speaks, the first sentence has to start with A, the next sentence has to start with B, then C, all the way to Z. If we haven't reached the end of our story, we'll circle back to A and keep going. And if we finish the story before we get to Z, we may end before we've done the whole alphabet. Right. And this one is going to be scene slash narrative based, although we reserve the right to actually speak and quote, you know, actually dialogue as our actors. It's just this one will tend to be more a bit more uh, narrative type thing. More narrative, yeah, but we may come in and out of some dialogue as well. Exactly. All right, so act three, misfits start gaining, now the bad guys start sabotaging, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, we've got our, we've got our, our roadmap. Okay. And here is act three, A to Z. Afternoon campers. Here afternoon campers. Here we are in week four of the six week challenge. And uh Cabin L is actually in third place behind Cabin X and Cabin D. <laughs> <laughs> you like Boys, I am so proud of you as your counselor. You guys have been doing so well. Listen, just just a few more weeks. If we keep coming together and working, I think we can actually win the flow off this year. Could we actually win the flow off? I can't believe it. I mean, cabin uh, cabin D is so uh, strong and and, they, and and they're so powerful, but it seems like we're actually able to to stay close to them. 
Daniel and <laughs> Daniel and Derek have come up with a great plan for us to finish these last few weeks. Kenny, listen, you are going to be our secret weapon. No one expects you anything of you, but you are going to be the key to help us win the flow off. <laughs> Evening falls as they begin to put their plan into action for the next event, which occurs tomorrow morning. Feelings themed is the competition of the next day, where rather than being physical or artistic, the winner of this competition will be the counselor or team that can do the best job emoting. Gross. I don't like sharing my feelings at all. That's going to be a strange thing. I don't want to, I don't want to share my emotions about this. Hey now, David, listen. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you're a your camper, David, the bad guy. <laughs> hey now, David, listen, I, I know you're terrible at emoting. I got you on my team because you're kind of a jerk, but listen, we if we can't win the competition, you need to make sure that someone on that team doesn't win either. Ira, I can do that. Just give me tonight. Cut to later that night. Just as the campers are all falling asleep, there is a knocking on the window right next to Kenny's bed. Kenny. Kenny. It's Dave from Cabin D. I need you to open the window and listen to me. Listen to you about what, Kenny? You're on the other team and you're kind of a bully and a jerk and our cabin doesn't like you. Why should I listen to anything you have to say? Maybe maybe we got off on the wrong foot. I mean, you guys are only third place out of 12 cabins and I gotta admit, I'm pretty impressed with you. And I wanted to let you know something. I, I didn't... I heard from Ira that he's gonna be kind of sabotaging tomorrow's feelings event. And I just wanted you guys to win or lose fair and square. So I wanted to let you know about something that he's going to try and do tomorrow at the event. Now I don't know what to believe. You've you've always been so mean, David. Why are you now suddenly coming up like you have a conscience and and sharing with me? Oh, can't a guy change during summer camp? Can't Camp Canoe have have a good influence on me? Now listen, he's going to ask for some various feelings, all right? And one thing is, whatever you do, don't make sure that you stay away from talking about cats. Focus on dogs, focus on mice. Cats, two of the counselors had cats that died last year. And if you start bringing up the cats, it's going to sabotage you unfairly. And he's going to try and steer you into that. All right? So that was the, the, the thing he's trying to do. And I wanted you to have a fair shot. Avoid talking about cats. Jump to the next day where the competition's about to start. Prepare your presentations, campers. You must share an emotive presentation and talk about animals that you love and how they make you feel. Quiet, quiet down, everybody. Come on, gather around, gather around, uh, uh, Cabin L, Cabin L. All right, so uh, who has a great animal that they love, that they want to uh, volunteer to, to talk about and really just sell on the emotion. Your favorite pet, great story with your pet. Uh, anybody, Kenny, Daniel, Derek, uh, Matt. Right here, I'll, I'll do it. I have an idea. Um, I, I have a cat I love very much, but I think I can translate that to talking about a dog. I think it'll work better if I talk about the dog than the cat. So I'm willing to do it. I think, I think this is going to be the key to us winning. Suits me, Kenny. You go for it, man, and you talk about that dog, okay? The competition begins, and Kenny begins talking at length about a dog. And as he does, he looks over and sees two of the counselors have begun to sob uncontrollably. Uh oh. I don't think this is working the way it's supposed to. Uh, so my dog that I love dearly is what? Why are they all crying? Counselor Steve, Derek, why are they all crying? Very, very good, the moderator says as he shuffles Kenny off the stage, whisper, leaning over whisper. I guess you didn't get the memo that those two counselors had dogs that died last year, and no one was supposed to bring that up. They're very sensitive about it. What? What do you mean? I, Kenny looks over at Dave, who 
who's smiling cockily as he walks towards the stage. Xerox copy that presentation, David, that Kenny was going to give, but just swap out the word dog for cat, and we are sure to win this round and take the lead. You got it, Ira. David starts, sits down and starts telling a heartwarming tale of almost identical to what Kenny was saying, but this time with a bald sphinx cat as the main character. Zooming in on the counselors who were crying, we now see that their tears of sadness have turned to tears of joy as they award Team um, Cabin D, David's team, first place in the emoting competition. <laughs> absolute mind blown how the heck did they how did they luck out like that daniel matt derek cabin l i know you guys worked so hard on this but it, it seems almost like they knew that we were going to be talking about dogs boys i have something to tell you i i should i should have told you before but but I thought he changed. David came to me and he told me that the counselors had lost cats and we shouldn't talk about cats and we should only talk about dogs. And, and I thought he had reformed and I believed him and I just screwed the whole thing up. I should have talked to you. I'm sorry. Rice, Kenny. You may have just caused this thing for us. Actually, it's not just you. It's those jerks over at Cabin D. Those two guys ruined everything with their cheating and now we're going to lose this whole competition because David had to cheat. Oh. David and Cabin D are the worst. I should never have come to this camp. I wish my parents didn't force me to be here. You guys, I can't believe you pushed me into this. I should have just been reading. Everybody calm down, all right? We still have one more event at the end of this week, and now we know they're not playing fair. It's time for us to get some retribution. Flow off. Final competition starts next week. Prepare yourselves, camper, because it's all going down. Scene. And so ends Act 3 yes. of Cap Canoe oh. and the Flow, where Kenny was betrayed by David, and David, cheating, managed to get them into first place. So now we move to Act 4, the final competition of Camp Canoe and the Flow, and we will use an improv game called Cutting Room, where Mike and I will start out with a scene, and at any point, either of us can clap our hands and say, cut to something else. It could be cut to a different scene going on right there. It could be cut to the future, the past, something completely random. Mm -hmm. And we will take this movie to its inevitable conclusion. Yes. All right. And so our scene begins in the cabin the morning of the day of the final competition. All right, pay attention, Cabin L. Here we go. This is the final challenge, the flow off. We start here at the top of the river at the north part of Camp Canoe. We flow down here to here, and then we tag our flag at this point, this point, and this point. From here, the river forks and then re-emerges at the very southern bottom for a last little sprint. If you go to the left fork, it's a little safer, but it takes a little longer. If you go to the right fork, it's actually whitewater rapids. But if you can manage it, you'll gain a lot of time and maybe even win the event. Listen, guys, I, I don't know if I should be part of this competition. I feel so bad that I'm the one who lost this, the emoting competition because I believe David. So maybe I should just sit this one out. Kenny, let me tell you something, Kenny. I've been scared my whole life. All right. And there's one thing that you guys all taught me here at Camp Canoe. It's that letting fear stop me from doing things means I'm never going to live life. You can't sit this out because you're afraid that you've been embarrassed by David. You got to stand up. You got to live life. You got to get on that canoe with the rest of us. And you got to show David that you bounce back stronger and tougher because that's exactly what he doesn't want to see. He wants to think that you've been beaten. So, Kenny, will you face your fears with me on the canoe? I will. I will. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. I will face my fears. And you, you've inspired me. You face your fears to save me from the sharks. And I'm going to face my fears to help defeat David and, Cam and Cabin D. Well, this is all well and good. And, you know, I'm really glad to have you on this. But here's the problem, C Counselor Steve. If we do this white water portion, how are we going to be able to see the rocks? Last thing, all we need to do is get one rock smashing the bottom of the canoe and we're done for. Well, guys... I think I can get you safe with that. One thing I've learned at camp is that, yeah, you know, I would love, but I'm a little young to really be getting the action I've been looking for. So maybe these binoculars I can use not to look at the girls, but to look for rocks 
on our path while we're canoeing down the rapids. Yeah, that's a great idea, Jack. Or should we say eagle-eyed Willie? <laughs> Let's cut to the starting line of the canoe race um, where they have the banter with David and Cabin D. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, look who decided to show up just to watch us win the all campus, the uh, the camp canoe flow off. (laughs) Good to see you, cabin losers. Hey, you shut up. Just because we're cabin L doesn't mean we're losers. It means we're lifelong friends and we're never going to be screwed by you again, David. Cut to these lifelong friends 60 years later when they're all in their retirement home. <laughs> Reminiscing. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember that summer at Camp Canoe and Flow? Yeah. It was great. Remember the girls with the bikinis? And remember when the bikinis fell off right at that <laughs> critical point in the race? I do. That was so great. And there's one regret I have, though. Winning that camp thing did nothing for my life. When those bikinis <laughs> fell off, I should have left you losers behind and gotten me some right then and there. But Cut, instead- <laughs> back to the banter. It's gonna be great. To, it's gonna be great to sit at the finishing line, watching you guys paddle in behind us. <laughs> so long, losers. This production meeting where they're deciding on actors to cast for the role of bully David. Hmm. Well, let's see. Who's currently not being filmed right now? You know. He's coming off a really good turn as Johnny. Maybe William Zapka might be a good choice for this. I think so. I think you're talking bullies, you're talking Zapka. Zapka, bullies. Look at him in the dictionary. Hey, look at that. It's a picture of William Zapka. Yeah, he's a bully. He's great. Back to school. Karate kid. The the one with the girl is a guy. Yeah, yeah. Get me Billy Zapka, damn it. Okay. Back to the canoe race. Excellent. All right, campers. Get Get ready for uh, for the canoe off. We're going to be starting in two minutes. Hey, guys. I just want you to know that you guys have been one of the best cabins I've ever had. I love all you guys. I know you guys can do it. Just work together as a team. Use your strengths. And don't focus on anything other than just winning this race together. Oh, my God, Steve. That was amazing. You've got such great camp spirit. I like how you really care about these kids now instead of trying to get through the summer. It's such a turn on. Thanks, Jill. Hey, uh, speaking of which, we got about 20 minutes before they cross the before they start. You want to go back and look at my uh, shiny rock collection? <gasps> I love shiny rocks. Let's go look at your rock collection. <laughs> got to them looking at the rock collection. <gasps> is that an opal? <laughs> sure is, right next to this shiny piece of hematite. <laughs> oh, hematite gets me so wet. <laughs> Cut to them on the canoe on the race. All right, all right, guys, we're doing great. Uh, we're, we're we're still holding up. I can see Camp D and uh, Cabin D in front, but here's the junction point. All right, guys, point of no return. Are we gonna go the safe way? Or are we gonna brave the rapids? Well, I think I know what we should do. But listen, I think we should ask Daniel. He's the one who's the most afraid. Daniel, you make the decision. I, I. I want us to win, and I want us to win by not giving in to our fear. Turn right, turn right, and let's get those rapids. Yeah, Wanna... let's do it. All right, all right, Jack, it's your turn now. We're in the rapids. Let us know where the rocks are. Cut to them navigating the rapids with uh, with uh, Jack with his binoculars providing lookouts. One to left, turn left, turn left. Turn left, turn left, turn left. Battle. Hard right, hard right. Oh, turn hard right, turn right, right. Turn... <gasps> Bikinis. <gasps> Which way do I go? Which way do I turn? Cut to the shore with the girls in their bikinis. <laughs> oh, it's, oh. <laughs> it's so hot. I, I don't want to get any tan lines this summer. I know. I agree. I feel the same way. Oh, and the string is so constricting. Boink. <laughs> hey, are those creepy canoe kids looking at us? <gasps> go away. What are you doing? Stop that. Stop looking at us. Come back to the canoe. <gasps> Wait a minute. Those are just girls. They'll be fleeting. I bet. If I stay with my boys and help them out, I will never, ever, ever regret this decision. Jack! <laughs> Cut to him years later regretting this decision. Oh, that was a, such a mistake, you guys. <laughs> you guys, you barely stayed in touch. You didn't write me any damn postcards. I could have had some. I could have been a 10 year old non virgin. Instead, it took me forever to get laid. Camp was the place. I hate you guys. Cut back to the mysterious through the rapids. Hurry up, Jack! You've got to let us know which way to go, which way to go. All right, ready, left. Left, left again. Left, left again. Hold. Uh, oh, God. Hold. 
can't hold. The oar broke. The oar broke. I- I'm not strong enough to turn the boat. I'm strong enough. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Matt. <laughs> I can do it. Listen, it takes a lot of strength to carry on this much fat. I am far stronger than you guys know. <laughs> Cut to David and Camp D uh, getting through the safe portion and being completely alone and in the lead. <sighs> oh, well. I'm so glad we took that nice, relaxing, safe route. We are in the lead. We are good to go. Can- yeah. Cabin D is going to win. David, man, you did it again, man. This is going to be great. Let's just kind of ease up. You know what? I'm not even going to paddle. Put the paddle here. Let's just let the cool stream carry us to victory. Come back to the other canoe. Oh, God, we're going. Matt, you're doing great. Matt, you're doing really, really good. You're keeping us safe. You are a true friend. Thank you. You guys are my only friends, and I will not let you down. Look, look, the rapids are about to end, and I see Captain D's canoe. We're almost upon them. Good. Oh, good. Hey, guys, look, look. They've got their oars just sitting right on the side of the canoe. If Matt, if you turn to the left, we can grab them. We can grab the oars as we go by them and use them. Okay, I'll do <laughs> Listen, listen, guys. You know that water and sharks are my biggest fear, but I have an idea. Kenny, you still got all those open wounds from those shark attacks. I, I you, do. <laughs> and I think the sharks have a taste for your blood. Once we get their oars, if we dip your bloody leg into the water, the sharks will come and devour the other team's canoe. Cut to them pulling alongside the canoe and having the plan in action. Hey, wait, what are you guys doing? How did you get here? Hey, we got your oars, you idiot. Just give that back. Give that back. Uh, uh, hey, David. don't touch my friend. Jeez. Matt grabs David with one arm and picks him up like this. Oh, man, you're strong. <laughs> All right. Kenny, hold my hand. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dip you in the water, and the sharks are going to come. You got it. Dunk. Cut to the sharks at this moment in time. Oh, it's been a lovely afternoon. I think we should maybe go look at some of the deep sea plankton down in the lower I part th- of the river. I think so. It sounds like a good... Wait. What is it? I smell blood. <gasps> I smell nerdy asthmatic blood. Your blood? The blood? Like, Your blood? The blood? The blood? The blood? <laughs> Come back to the, uh, to the two rafts, or the two uh, canoes. Now listen, David, I hate you, but I'm too good to hit you. Get back in your canoe. Oh, oh God, please don't hurt me. Please don't. Wait, what's that sound? What's that sound? Cut to the knockoff John Williams Jaws score that's playing in the background. Cut to David's canoe being left behind by Camp L's canoe. It's been great doing business with you. Row, row, row. No. No. Oh, my gosh. The sharks. The sharks that I put in the lake. They've come here. They're surrounding me. (laughs) Please help me. Cut to them triumphantly crossing the finish line to glorious fanfare and an 80s rock soundtrack. Yay, we've won. Steve, Steve and Jill come running out from behind. They're kind of partially clothed. I knew you guys could do it. I knew it. You guys are oh the best God, cabin ever. Team won because you gave them the spirit. Cut to Ira being currently arrested for tax fraud as he's trying to run away from the from the camp. You'll never get me alive, coppers. You'll never take me away from my camp. <laughs> Ira, you're under arrest for willfully abusing the camp funds of Camp Canoe for the last fifteen years. Oh, tax fraud. Good. I thought you were going to arrest me for putting the kids' lives in danger with sharks. Excellent. <laughs> yes, let's go to jail. Cut to the the the, the glorious family-friendly uh, finale when the five kids are uh, saying goodbye to each other and promising to see each other next summer. Hey, guys. This was the best summer I ever had. I feel like I, feel like I don't even need my inhaler anymore. You guys were so good for me. Yeah, I really got to say, I never was proud to be who I was before this summer, but being with you guys... I'm real proud of who I am, and I'm proud to have you as my friends. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, you guys, you guys are the best. And you know what? Even though I didn't lose my virginity this summer, I think I think I made something way better. Lifelong friends. A decision I'll never regret. <laughs> guys, can't wait to come back here after my honors athletic year over in high school and see you guys for our first summer camp as freshmen in high school. It's going to be great, guys. I'm really excited for it. 
And yeah, you guys, uh, yeah. you know, I didn't want to come here. My parents made me and it's the best thing that ever happened to me. And I, I don't feel afraid of life anymore. And I can't wait to see you guys again. Oh, hey, uh, Sorry, I gotta say, I was just gonna one thing there. Uh, I can't find it. I, I was, uh, <laughs> uh, guys, I love you all very much. And now I'm gonna go back to my small New England town and live there for a year, where I'm sure nothing bad will ever happen. <laughs> as 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 two red balloons that a clown might have <laughs> float in the air. <laughs> Gosh, does anyone have friends like they did when they were ten? <laughs> Darling, darling, stand by me. Whoa, stand and scene. That was actually so surprisingly ends charming. Our story of Camp Canoe and the Flow. I was desperately trying to remember the town that Pennywise was in because I wanted to drop that. Uh, it was all on a Castle Rock or Derry. Probably Derry, I think. Derry, it's what it is. Out. Damn it. I was literally going to be like, can't wait to go home to my town of Derry and uh, come back next <laughs> yeah, summer. Get the it reverence back. Yeah, we uh, all float down all here. All right, well, there was our movie of Camp Canoe and the Flow. Uh, oh, we had a very good. fun time performing that. Hopefully, you all had a great time listening to it. If you did, if you could help us out with a couple of quick things. Uh, number one. Uh, go on over to iTunes and leave us a five-star rating. And if you feel so inclined, a short couple sentences or paragraph review, that is really key to helping others learn about our show. It helps the show grow. If you like this episode, go ahead and take the link and share it on your social media, Facebook, Twitter, um, Instagram, wherever you like to let others know about it. I um, mean, if you want more information about us and the show, go to our website, avishandmike.com, A-V-I-S-H-A-N-D-M-I-K-E. Dot com. You can sign up for some stuff. You can make suggestions and just see all our back episodes as well. Yes. Uh, and then on that note, uh, we have not picked yet what our next movie for next week will be. So you'll have to f- tune in next week to find out what it's going to be. Awesome. Well, thank you guys for listening and we will see you next week for our next movie. Avish, thanks for a great time. And listeners, thanks so much for tuning in. I will see you next week, Avish. See you. Bye-bye.